Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. You feel good, James. Do you? I feel real good, man. It's Monday. It's Monday morning. We we tape these uh, these Tuesday night shows usually on a Monday morning. You know, yeah. Strong weekend, Mother's Day. All pudding. Um, you look smooth. I feel smooth. Thank you. You look smooth to the top. Thank you. Straightrazors dot com. Um, but it was Mother's Day, mm-hmm. and we we've been you were working. Mm-hmm. So I did, I did what I could. I took the kids for the weekend and I said, hey, Jabes, I love you. Live your best life. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who are watching the video show at home, subscribe on YouTube. Ross Patterson Revolution. We're building a new studio. Yes. Um, that requires Jesse's personal touch. You're, you're really great at that stuff. Yeah. Like you're, you're a craftsman. Yeah. I, um, you I'm probably could have built us a, a kitchen table. I probably could. I probably should. Um, I uh, yeah. So I'm basically the general manager. Yeah, the, the general GC. contract. The general contractor. Yeah. So I'm working with one other guy. He's doing all the build out, and I'm going to do the finishes. I saw a picture of Lowe's dropping off what seems like I don't know enough oh. wood to for a habitat a for humanity small, type yeah. of thing when I was just like, would you, are we building a house? Yeah. It looked like we were building a barn, but, um, it requires a lot for these. Cause a lot of people don't see it at home probably. And they're like, dude, how big are these sets? How intricate are they? This fucking thing is heavy, man. Um, yeah, probably I would say what it's probably 180 pounds. Yeah. 200 pounds. Um, so it takes a lot. It requires a lot of wood. Yeah. And this is like our good, hopefully, forever kind of studio so you have to do you know well soundproof what not forever james you know until new york comes brother right right. well yeah of course um so you have to do like (laughs) soundproofing and actually make it the real deal yeah Uh, and a lot of people ask at home like what's what the plans are overall like what's going to happen with the show because look everybody three days a week drives in to work with this and everything else the, the the real honest to God answer is like, you know, hopefully it's Stern and Robin someday and we're able to take this and just keep getting it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. We won't know. Um, Stern's retiring in a couple of years. So uh, let's get it out of there. Yeah. Let's get it out well, of there. I would like there. to keep it free and keep it podcast style. Would Personally, you? That was going to be my next question. Yeah. I'd just like to be Rogan, really. It'd be great because right? Stern and Robin have to answer to people. Yeah, they do. And Rogan's model is still free to people. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah, but he's he, making ninety million a year. Right, but that's his. 90. You know, he built it's it great. to that. Absolutely, so, it's rad. That would that would be amazing. I would I, not I got like to, see... to make it so that like we leave the free model and be like, hey guys, everyone that's listened to us, now yeah, you have go to, to Sirius XM. Yeah, now. so. Which I don't think. I mean, is Sirius going to still be a thing? Tough call. Um, I've I've said before privately to people, and I'll tell them. I, I can tell you on air. Like, there's been a couple offers for Sirius XM. The the the, the pay is shit. Yeah. Um, you have to live in New York, and right. it's just like, dude, good luck. Might as well be a college student on that. For me, the point of doing this. And the point of podcast and all of the things that I love about it are, A, we don't have to answer to anybody. Yeah. We say and do what we want. Therefore, you get realness. Yeah. And it's free for people. It so is. So if we could keep that and build that, that would be my dream. It'd be awesome. And hopefully that, that happens. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But either way, we're expanding. Thank you to everybody uh, out there who's been listening, the 1.6 million of you. And uh, look, the studios keep getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. We went from one to another one to a higher end to a higher end. Yeah. And it, you know, the buildings keep getting bigger and all this stuff. So I'm amped about it. Um, I'm, look, I'm amped about this this week too, Jabes. What? Woo! You know this is 
I, I'm a sportsman. Mm-hmm. I'm a sportsman at heart. Right. You know, probably could have p- played professionally. Uh, uh, played what? Maybe triangle. Uh-huh. Um, not, not a, I mean, I consider that a sport. Obviously, it's, you know, it's not. Right. But the triangle to me is um, just because of the beauty and the wonderment of the instrument. I could never have played professional sports. Therefore, I love professional sports. Um, okay. Watching them all the time where I'm just like, oh, man, because you're always hoping to see something that you, you, could, you couldn't do in real life. That's why I watch it. Yeah, That's what, what I, I like would, it. I would, yeah. I so, need an explanation. Yep. Because you, the, you're, you're watching. Constant. Well, it's the same way with like Top Chef for you, right? Right. That's true. Do you think you could ever be a, a Michelin chef or any of those things? Like in my heart, I do. <laughs> same. So yeah, in my yeah. heart, do I think I could score 10 points in an NBA yeah, game? Yeah, you're right. You I bet. watch people cook. In, act- in actuality, yeah. I, I can't score 10 points in an NBA game. So therefore, when I watch football and baseball and basketball and stuff, I think because I played all those sports as a kid, you realize like, hey, there's, there's a massive jump between that and being a professional athlete. Like, it's, I always joke about like Tony Romo, right, playing golf. He was a, a, a great NFL cornerback. Well, he's decent enough quarterback, sure. right? And now he's playing, he plays like professional golf tournaments where he just kind of sneaks in or they let him in because he's a celebrity. And it's like, you know, people are amped because he shoots a 76. And it's like, bro, you'll never be Tiger or, or anywhere near a professional right. thing. Like in his heart, he probably feels like yes, they all do. Right. All of those guys do. And it's like, eh, it's like every actor who wants to be a musician. It's like, yeah. no, man, that's not going to, that's not going to be a thing. Right. It's not going to be a thing for you. Right. So that, that's kind of the sports world for me. And then it, it just keeps getting reinforced. Like last night with that shot, Kawhi Leonard, we were watching uh, Toronto rip out the hearts of Philadelphia on a shot at the buzzer that, you know, bounced around four times. That's amazing. Like, yeah. That's something you dream of your entire life in a game seven, hitting the game winning shot. It's never happened before in the NBA at the buzzer. So when it went down, you're like, man, that's rad. I wish that could be me. Right. You know? Okay. That's kind of the magic of it. Okay. Uh, the other cool thing about doing a sports show on Drinking Bros is, you know, we get tickets for all this stuff and we get to go and, you know, we do a show once a week. And then I, I get to go to the, the Eastern Conference Finals in uh, hockey tomorrow night for Carolina. And I get to take my boy. That's going to be really fun. I'm amped about that. Yeah. So a little. He's, he seems excited. He's so. really excited. Yeah. And that's going to be great. Are you excited about that? About you guys going? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Getting an evening. What's the, what's the hesitation there, James? No, I'm excited for you guys to go. What do you okay, mean? Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. What are you asking? What you am go, I excited? Um... What do you mean? What am I, ex- am I excited to have you guys gone? No. Uh, oh. But about, about uh, you, you know, guys going. the little one go, get, getting to see a hockey game yeah. you know, up close no, and personal. No, it's awesome. It's pretty crazy. And he keeps I always wonder if asking, he'll, yeah. when are we going to see it in real life? Did it happen already? What are you talking about? They already played. What are you talking about? It's over. He like doesn't quite get it, but he is really excited about it, which I haven't seen yet for like a game. We're always like, hey, you're going to go. And he's like, cool. Like doesn't even really know what that means. Right. You know what I mean? He's like. Okay, I guess I'll go. I wonder if he'll remember any of this. I always think that with think with my five, kids. Five, I think at five you start remembering. I think so. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna. We got sweet tickets. What you so. try and do is make it so those the good memories happen, and you try and not let some traumatic thing overshadow. <laughs> do you know what I mean? What what what's gonna happen? That's gonna be traumatic. No, but that's the point of being a parent. You just try and keep the memories, yeah. keep the life good <laughs> enough, and nothing tragic happens to sure, like, no trauma. No, like, like beating the shit out of another parent at Disneyland or something. That. Or yeah. like, yeah, you protect them from fucking weirdos. You like make sure they're good. There's no trauma yeah. that like overshadows any good memories that they have. <laughs> I think is the point of parenting. Again, I do not know. No, you don't. I've I've, I've uh, never taken a class, and I don't claim no, no to be the best at it. No, so no, you never have. Um, right. Uh, I want to talk about what we watched last night. I don't think I've ever laughed that hard. Then after we finished, because we watched, there was a couple things out this weekend that we wanted to watch. Right, that were, were that were yeah. new. One of them was the Wu-Tang Clan doc right. of Mikes and Men, which is a great title. Totally. 
Great title. Great title. Of Mike's and Men. Uh-huh. After, so it's a four-part special. Sure. And we watched part one last night. They're each right. an hour apiece. And I'm a big Wu-Tang Clan fan. You literally, your first words out of your mouth as soon as the credits came up were, oh my God, I am definitely not about that life. No, I said I'm, I am super white. <laughs> and that documentary just holds a mirror up to yourself. Where like, you know, as white people, sometimes we like to think that like, yeah, dude, like I like Wu-Tang, like I'm with it, right? Yeah. I listen to them, like I know, I know what their life was like, right? Yeah. In the projects, I understand sentences they say. Yeah. Because I'm cool. And then you watch something like that and you go, oh. Oh, no. I missed whole paragraphs because the words <laughs> and the, you know, the sentences and every, I did not know a lot of the words in the. Sure. So uh, because I'm white as shit and not that cool. And so it really, for anyone who is a white Wu Tang fan, yeah, I think that it was a it was a cold hard look in the mirror of you have no fucking idea what it's like. Totally, and and like I, don't even think for one second that you know what Wu Tang is about. You the, know what I'm the saying? The reason why I laughed so hard last night after after that statement was I, I was thinking the exact same thing too. I think you beat me to it by like half a second, where I was just like, oh shit, it, it's. Very much about what I was talking about at the top of the show about being a professional athlete where you're like, oh, in your heart, you think you can. In your heart, if you're a Wu-Tang you know, oh. fan or a rap fan as a, white, think, as a white person, if you If you think, saw RZA, you'd be like, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and they'd be like. They'd be like, no, dude. No, my no, friend. No. Actually, no. And you tell me if you would have made it out of the ghetto of this, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Or if you understand anything that we're talking about, getting your feet wet. Yeah, you would, you would think, I would, right? Just because of work ethic, you're like, oh man, if I was poor and black and grew up in the ghetto w- where they did, you know? Because they had, I mean, they went inside and they had cr- a crazy footage, by the way. It's an awesome doc. Um, oh yeah. They had crazy footage of them like on Christmas as kids, like inside right. um, the projects and shit. And you're like, fuck. And you- drone footage of like these projects that are still there and like the ponds that they're talking about behind yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah. They really... It's great. It's good, yeah. But when I watched it, I was like, oh, fuck, man, no. Probably not. I could not never have made it. Absolutely not. I no. mean, they all went to jail or prison for... Crack. Yeah, but like up five to eight years. Yeah. So friends before in the projects yeah. that were kind of emceeing together, yeah. and then they all get, get into selling drugs. I don't know how hard they were into doing them. They all get into selling it, drugs. It didn't seem like didn't seem like they any were, of them were actually doing the yeah, drugs. They, they were like just selling them. weed, yeah. but like selling them. Yeah. And all went to jail for like every single one of them. For crack. Yeah, yeah we were just like, oh shit. For about we're... for five to eight years, each of them. And yeah. then came back together afterwards and was just like, we need to fucking get our lives together, dude. How do we The drone do footage this? helped me understand what that was like where i was just like all right so you're really stuck kind of on a couple square blocks you know in this area that the the government puts you whatever and showing the other part of it was what was that 80s early 90s showing these kids either being bust in um staten island so they were like black kids that were trying to go to these like mostly white schools and in earlier footage than i've seen of people standing at the line and telling these fucking black people to like go home yeah, yeah, yourself yeah. like where's the crack like it, you know but that's that's the problem with busting in the 80s though i know just but, like, but dude this these people don't are still alive that's but here that here, yelled at them like that yes. so it's an, it's another thing when i say cold hard look in the mirror of like oh yeah like but it that, wasn't that long ago. It, it wasn't, you know, but, and, but that's the problem with busing too. Cause I look, I told you I went, for one year I went to a school that bust, right? Right. Both, both races were miserable, white and black, where it was just like, man, you're pushing all these kids together that, you know, diversity can't just happen overnight. And it's not, certainly not going to happen on a long goddamn bus ride, especially when, you know, people fucking, one of them's coming from an extreme mm-hmm. drastic, and then you're shipping people in who aren't used to that extreme drastic coming into your school. It's that's a recipe for disaster on both sides, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, after watching that whole shit, I was like, oh, I could never live that life. 
I want to say work ethic wise, I would have got out of there. Because mm-hmm. I think it all, I really do believe it's on your work ethic, like everything in life, mm-hmm. right? And so when I saw the, like, there was always one guy and they kept going back to the one guy of like, all right, we rallied around him and mm-hmm. he, he did it, you know? Yeah. Work ethic has a lot to do with it, but the rest of it is just like, Jesus Christ. I, I don't know how you, I don't know how you get out of that environment. And I definitely knew inside my heart after seeing that, I was like, nope, could never live the life that they rap about ever. <laughs> no, and don't understand it. And no. also like, um, love the music. It's real, you know? It's real. It's real. Yeah. The whole, the whole thing that, uh, that they talk about and continue to talk about. I mean, I don't think bitching about it and wallowing in it is the answer, but like, we also can't say like, Hey guys, it's over. Can we get over this whole right, right, right. racism thing? Cause it's not, Yeah, you know? And, um, and even if it is getting better now like it was not that long ago no no that it people wasn't that again are still alive were standing at the bus and like you know what i mean yeah so because you see these you see these this footage of like the 60s and it's grainy and black and white and segregation you know and you yeah. just think that it re- it was so long ago guys right you know what i mean or you see the kkk in their fucking and you're like Please, these are, that's nobody. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. like a little, they're in some field. They don't affect you really. They're just ridiculous. But then you see stuff like that not that long ago and you go, okay. Yeah, pretty wild. Super white. <laughs> pretty wild to see, but their story was cool. Um, nine of them, I understand, like when they kept saying the record label, they were like, oh man, the record labels wouldn't sign nine people at once. No shit. Mm-hmm. I, that I understood. Could you imagine trying to wrangle nine crazy motherfuckers like that for and just at one show? One show and hey guys, all the just things show up that on can time. go wrong. wrong as far as like people getting into drugs. Who's the person that's always late? Who's the person that like, you know nuts. what I mean? Absolutely nuts. So that was impressive as well. Yeah. The, and the other part about it is you wonder like, you know, because there's always in a group that big or any group really. There's a couple of them that usually make it out like really big. Mm-hmm. And then the others are kind of just there. Um, and like you, like Method Man. Method Man and, you know, those guys, Red Man shit. You're just like, oh, hey, man. Mm-hmm. What? What are you feeling? You know, like imagine going from there to like Hollywood meetings where you're starring in your own movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so wild to me. And then RZA too was like, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, look, dude. Shows and yeah. R- RZA has been like he scores movies and shit. Yeah. So he's done a lot, man. Yeah. Um, he worked on uh, Tarantino's movies, the yeah. Kill Bill series, and all that shit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's done a lot, and he's amazing. But you wonder, you're like, man, how do you just separate that? You know? Separate what? Just going into a Hollywood meeting after living the life you lived of selling crack and looking at these people, because he's. I look at these people when I go into these meetings and I'm like, man, you're all fucking ridiculous humans who have no idea about the world. Right. And I'm not even from that world. Right. And I think that's probably the issue a lot of times. Right. Where you're like, you want to take my experience. You want to take all the cool shit that I do and I know and you want to make it fucking your shit. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Uh, As usual. I know. I know there, there, there's a biopic coming too about uh, like the invention of like trap music. Um, and it was supposed to be T.I. And he passed. He was just like, I'm good, bro. Like, uh, and they ended up going, I think with like young Jeezy or somebody like that. And um, I, it's, it's Brian Grazier, if, if memory serves me correctly. And it was just like T.I. kind of started that movement. Mm-hmm. And when they couldn't get T.I., you know, they, they went to somebody else and he was just like, Man, they're just looking to tell this story. Oh, they it doesn't don't matter oh, who it they is. They don't care who really started it. <laughs> they want to tell the story yeah. and they want it to look cool. They want to shoot it on red. You know, they want to get awesome footage. Yeah. And, um, so yeah. this one, this one's going to be a biopic, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I'm curious about that. Hmm. super curious about that there's a bunch of biopics out there that i I wonder in what stage of development they're in and why at this point like the ronda rousey one was a big one um they bought that a couple years ago it was a book and there's a book in like 2015 it was 
It was pitched as Eight Mile. Oh, okay. I guess okay. she had a really hard upbringing For and all me, that other I stuff. For me, I kind of just want to see the doc of it. Maybe. I, look. A really good HBO-style doc will get me over a biopic any Docs day. are massive now, man. You mean, you pay $10 million for that AOC doc. Like, that's... Look, the budget on the new guy was, you know, $13 million. Right. Paying $10 million for a doc, for Christ's sake. Because you run sakes. into stuff like the Queen doc, or the Queen, Queen biop, biopic, right? Yeah, yeah. Where you're just like, he takes you out of it. It's just, you, you start thinking about the actors. Made a gajillion dollars worldwide. I know, but I'm saying for me. Yeah, same. Um, I, I start to think about other things, lighting, actor, if he's doing a good job, like what it was really like. Like, I would love to see that. That scene that they did, like in real, like the real footage from stuff. Sure. And then I find myself just wanting to see the docs. See docs, yeah, yeah. But done really well. Eh. well maybe you'll get your dream someday, James. I don't know how that's going to shake out for them. For what? For all these biopics that are down yeah, the pipeline, because yeah. you have something that does really, really well. Like what was it, eight hundred million or something crazy worldwide for uh, Bohemian and Rhapsody? Yeah. Um, and then look, the Elton John doc. Everybody, this or not doc? Lit, I'm sorry, but biopic. Looks good. I know. He's but but if now if this chosen, does well, yeah, forget it. You're yeah, gonna see you're a, right. a million of these things. Hulk right. Hogan doc, or not doc, but uh, biopic just got picked up by Netflix. Chris Hemsworth is, is playing uh, Hogan. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to be savage in that if I could. Well, that a bunch could be of people something. Hit me up. That could be something with uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the Queen doc, where you're just gonna be picking him apart the whole time, acting wise. Like, can you really get into it with Hemsworth as Hogan? No, I don't think so. No, the whole time you're going to be critiquing if you're in the, I don't know. But the macho, but the macho man. Yeah, who's playing him? I hope uh, it'd be great if it was me. They're not ready yet. I think they're writing the script right now. Okay. Um, I know they packaged it up. Bradley Cooper's producing. uh, Fuck, who's the director of The Hangover? Todd Phillips, I think, is directing. Okay. Hemsworth is in there, so. It might be I don't know who's playing Savage, but I'd love to. I'd love to play Savage. Try just triple stack for Savage. You know? Oh hell, oh, who's here? <laughs> he was always my my fave. Him and Ric Flair, obviously. Yeah, but you know, is I think Ric Flair I think in that world, he well, is. He... But I think he deserves his own biopic, right. which is why I said, and uh, nobody's doing that. But uh, is someone gonna play him in this? There has to be. I, it depends on what years they focus on. Right. Okay. Right. Because they were both bigger towards at a later stage. Okay. I, I, what I heard was they're focusing on him younger oh, and kind okay, of the okay, rise okay. to the, the whole shit of Hogan. So we'll see. Uh, either way, we got some sponsors, Japes. Everybody was psyched that the sponsors are back. Live oh. reads from you. Yeah. They love it. They love it from the Jablers. Try and make it interesting. First of all, most got BlackRivalCoffee.com. Yeah. Both of us. Both of us drinking it today mm. 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 you get to ah. hear us drink oh how that's nice good. for you guys what a treat for you grab life by the beans what a treat for you guys if you don't uh follow black rifle coffee on uh youtube the youtubes or the facebook do it i w- i did their last commercial i did their mother's day commercial yesterday Oh, that's right that's uh, a good one yeah it was a good one yeah. um i they asked me to do the the voiceover for morgan freeman jared's kids yeah your voice. What was the what was what were, what were the lines? When it's too early for wine. When it's too early for wine, there, there is. is coffee. Black, Black Rifle, Rifle Coffee. Coffee. And you go to BlackRifleCoffee.com and uh, sign up. Coffee Club of the Month program delivers right to your door. Same dates of every single month. They don't miss. They don't miss. 20% revolution promo code. Take it off. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, next up. We got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Sleep so good. It's scary. It is scary there. Oh, Whew. love the ghost bed. Gosh. Love the ghost bed. We got and a bunch of photos. If you don't have kids, I bet that is just a dream sleep. Yeah. Do you oh, know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I lay down, I just think, gosh, if I didn't have these guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could sleep for a thousand oh. years. Sleeping beauty. <laughs> Sleeping beauty. Yep, using the same promo code, host both shows. Combined into one. A lot of people sent me pics and said, hey, man, uh, the, the husbands, they got it for their wives for Mother's Day. And I was like, cool. 
Um, I got you something special. It comes tomorrow. It's, oh, it's tracking. Nice. You guys at home will be able to see what I got her for Mother's Day. I can't tell you why or when, but it's soon. It's coming soon. That's all I'm, I'm going to say. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, it's really, really awesome and spectacular. I hope it's as spectacular as it looked online. Because you never know when you're buying this shit. Uh, but with GhostBed, you actually do know. Because we sleep on these goddamn things every day. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros today. Get yourself a mattress. 36 month. Pay as you go program. No interest. And as always, 15% off permanently if you were a military or first responder. Nobody's doing that. Isn't that great? Nobody's doing that. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. With shabloinkers. Shabloinks. Strikeforce has got four amazing flavors. Lemon, Ridge, Orange, and Make America Grape Again. Because I'm proud to be an American. Yeah. Fuck you. At least I know I'm free. Fuck you. Um, strike, that should be, should be Strike Force's new song. It really should. <laughs> Cut it. Chop up a clip and send it to them. Tell, tell Strike Force they need to get, they need to hire us to, it. to sing it. Chop it up. Send Chop it, it up. Screw it. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Get your energy on. Get your horn in Kick the can. You don't need it anymore. Tasty, tiny little tin pouch. Boom. Squeeze it into any liquid available. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. They ship everywhere in the entire world. And as always, the promo code is REVOLUTION for 20% off. Last but not least, this is what you came for. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Yeah. Oh, you rocket! Oh, that one's dirty. That one is dirty. You rocket! Real dirty. Real dirty. You rock your spice. Finest shaving products in the biz. That's why I'm so smooth all the time, James. So oh, I'm I why I'm so smooth. Uh, the smolder aftershave is, is the greatest goddamn thing on the planet. And Father's Day is coming up. If you're looking to get your father a kit, this is the jam. You can get the straight razors engraved too. Um, but if he's worried about using a straight razor, you can get the safety razors engraved as well. Uh, beard oils, shampoos, conditioners, and mustache waxes. You name it, they got it. Go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off, and then pick up uh, the new book, man. Pre-order. Thank you for my service uh, from Matt Best. Got to write it with my beef fry. It is out. Pre-order. Amazon. All of those numbers count towards the New York Times bestseller list, but it's got to be before opening day. So get it now in hardback. Hardback. Um the ghostbed.com thing, I, I, by the way, is super interesting. I didn't say the bundle package for a reason with the adjustable bases because I was saving it for this first story. So over in Sweden, they're testing out this, this viewer experience. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's a new thing. It's called VIP Bedroom Cinema. And what they're trying to do, and this is fucking weird, man. I don't, I don't really get it or, or think this will work. But what they're trying to do is to get people to stop watching Netflix and then treat this as a home experience. And it looks like two ghost beds with the adjustable bases mm-hmm. that go up mm-hmm. and they're connected together so you could be with your loved one mm-hmm. and watch a movie together. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've been to, I think you have, you, yeah, you've been with me where the, the, like the recliners in those theaters and you have the waitresses So and this shit. is in a theater? In a theater. mm that's what I said, right? Yeah. Because what's to stop you from just buying a ghost bed with the adjustable base and saying, dude, I'm just going to watch this shit at home. I don't fucking need that. What, I can press a remote and go up? Awesome. I can buy that from ghost bed. Why do I need this? And when you look at it, I mean, it, it is identical pretty much. I mean, they've got them. These look like couches, kind of painted like couches, but it's the same fucking thing. It's two splits that go up and you're like, all right, why would I do this? And it's like, dude, if you're building a whole theater, to rival your bedroom. Mm-mm. That, That's just a, it's so out of touch. Yeah. It's just so missing the point um, of the stay at home culture that is now where it's like, you, you see all these memes online of like, um, just loving plans to be canceled, hating to go out. Yeah. Loving if like, <laughs> y- yeah. 
Loving if your plans get canceled and you get to just stay home and binge the whole series. That is like culture now. It's cool to be like, I watched all of Friends and didn't do anything this weekend. Yeah. And you're like bundled up. The, the other thing is, I don't want to see missing. people lying in beds next to me, around me. The point all that is shit. not that you want to be in your bed. It, the bed is not the point, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Being home is the point. Not paying the money is the point. Leaving yeah. the house is the point. Yeah. That's so why, why point. would I leave my bed to go to another bed with a bunch of I other like strangers the, I who like are the, in beds? I like the recliner model. I like the serving dinner. I like that, yeah. Wine yeah. recliner model. Like I like that, and I will go... To the movies to do that, you can we get dinner, never wine, you got can... out of there under a hundred dollars, though. No, but crazy. like again, the movies have to be fucking good enough for you to spend that. Oh yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. That's just yeah. what it is, and I don't. I, again, I don't mind doing that, but I would not do it for a bed. Mm-mm. I rang up a I rang up a tab of uh, one forty. 140 at one of those reclining movie theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Django Unchained. Okay. Uh, I think the maybe opening nights or the day after or whatever it was, because I think it came out on Christmas or something. But okay. um, either way, like you go in there and it's like three and a half hours. When you're able to press a button right next to you and a waitress oh, yeah. just comes out with endless beers and like, I forget who I was with, like a buddy of mine. And I was just like, we rang up a series oh, yeah. tab and it was like the button because <laughs> there's a button right next to you don't have to talk to ting, them ting. no yeah. they just bring it they and just, just put it, it on this table right next quietly. to you quietly yeah and the menu there was pretty extensive so i was just like yeah let's yeah. keep bringing this out yeah. and i knew the runtime going in so i was just like i was looking at my watch and i was like Ugh, i got another hour i can have at least two more it's beers awesome amazing amazing the bed thing though that's a no-go for me no, that's, again, missing the whole entire point. Because the other thing that they were asking was whether or not people are going to be fucking on these things. You know that's going to happen. It's unavoidable. I know, I guess. Yes, yes, it is. That's going to happen. I can tell you this right now. Again, missing the point, I think people will stay home to do that. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I think as a novelty, people will yeah, go out once, maybe. but I don't think this business model succeeds. Mm-mm. Um, Super it's the creepy. the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Possibly could be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm not sure. The day, the, you know, the day is young, but no, that yeah. is like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, you, and again, it just seems like some older idiot. Well, you get pitched a lot of dumb business ideas all the time, right? I, I know I do. You do? Yeah. And I know why, by the way. I do. I do. Yeah. Here, yeah. here, cause, so here's why is like because people ask me all the time they'll, they'll look at like the podcaster books or whatever right and be like dude i want to do what you do you know and i'm like well we've been doing this actually for a long time like right we've been, we've been podcasting for almost four and a half years now at mm-hmm. this point like we get it we got in on kind of the early side of it this show's only a couple years old um but the other one's four and a half so i kind of knew what i was doing and all that other shit but uh i i get it all the time because Typically, at this age, people are either bored with their job, mm-hmm. they hate it, and then, mm-hmm. or they took a job that they never wanted in the first place, and right. now they're stuck, and they're like, man, I think I can just switch, and it's always, let me run this idea by you. Mm-hmm. I got this thing, and I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, no. Don't do it. Definitely do not quit your job for that. I don't think people run things by me because they know I, I, I'm always telling people not to follow their dreams. <laughs> so I'm not the person that people are like, hey, what do you think of this? Because I will always be like, well, if you wanted to do that, you should have done it. Yeah. A long time a long ago. Time but ago, you yeah. now have a house and you have a family and you have other people that depend on you. So the following your dreams ship has sailed and I don't want you to kill yourself or anything, but hope is gone (laughs) and hope is lost. When I look at the bed thing, right? I always wonder to myself who, like how how do, how do people get these businesses going? Who gave them the money for this? I'm hoping it's not their own because they're they're going to lose all of it on this bed movie theater thing. And what do you mean their own? The people that put in? Yeah. Whoever like, you know, if you have rich investors who can lose money and whatever, it's like, yes, you'll, you will always feel bad about a, a failed business. You mm-hmm. should, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there, there's some things that are inevitable. 
some things you can't see coming and all that other shit. This is definitely one you should have saw coming, and that's and I don't think anyone going should to work. Build, try and build a business based on novelty. So like, if that's yeah. that's the only way that I can think of going there, and I would do it one time. So I don't know if that everyone going one time a successful business makes, but you know, whatever. I don't think anything that's like any novelty thing, like any restaurant that's kind of like, Hey, you do the, isn't as fun and different. You go up, you order, and then you have to like do a little dance before you can get your food. And it's like so fun. And (laughs) and, like, I would never do that. You know what I mean? That doesn't, I, I, it gives me anxiety. I'm not going to go. Yeah. And I don't know how many people would, unless it was like inside Disneyland. So things like that, I don't think you're not going to be successful. in. No, no, I don't, I, I don't think so. It's um, not like an Uber. It's not making your life easier. No. It's just some fucking weird shit that's really just going to make your life harder in it's, a couple ways. Speaking of Uber, that IPO didn't do well for them, which is, was surprising to me. Like it did initially. So the in- initial investors that got in, congratulations. Okay. The rest of, the, of Gen Pop, though, um, it fell and it fell pretty hard. Right. But I, you can buy that on the way down, I think. I think that will. It will go back up, though. Yeah, There's yeah. No way I, that I, I think, doesn't. but you, you know, it's gonna. I think it'll it'll take a while. Well, they'll have to acquire. They're gonna acquire all these other ones. Lyft, blah blah blah. Well, then, I don't know. L- Lyft's public as well, so yeah. Later on down the road, probably. But we'll see. Maybe you can just start putting beds in there. You know. There you go. If you can put a an Elon Musk car, a driverless car, just with a with a bed in that. In the back. Yeah, just a nice. Oh sure, you sure. You know, you know those new Teslas are like that. Essentially, I felt like I was in a giant bed riding in that thing. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I'm going to miss it because I'm driving to Raleigh tomorrow night. Mm. The last time I drove to Raleigh was in that thing. Oh, you're going to miss having to drive, actually. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going you're gonna to miss the Tesla. Okay, I got you. Because that's a Cause one. you rode in it one time, yeah. Well, here's the thing. So you're so going to miss it. Yeah. It's a straight shot <laughs> all the way to Raleigh. So that was the last time I, I, I drove to Raleigh. It was, <laughs> okay. was that, right? And it was in that thing? Yeah. Didn't touch the wheel once. Yeah. Because it's one of those roads. It's a two-lane road. You know what I'm talking about, where you're just God. like, yeah. And I could be on a train. I could be on a thing. Or, it's one of those boring rides, too, where you're just like, just takes longer because it is so boring and straight. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was built for a Tesla ride. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of turns, not a lot of hoopla. <laughs> but if you gave me not one of those of things, just give me a Musk car right now for a driver like that. I'm good mm-hmm. to go. Mm-hmm. Oof. Mm-hmm. I'd, be, I'd be real good to go, Jabes. Bam. Real good to go. Let me ask you something. Where'd you get that? A lot of people were asking where you got that little sweater at. Oh, I got it at... Um... What does it say on the back? The Malibu High Rollers High Rollers of Malibu. Yeah. I got it. Buffalo Exchange in Ventura. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Because people were like. Higher end thrift store. That's it. That's what it was, right? All right, cool. Because a lot of people were asking like, hey, did you make that? I was like, you know, I don't don't actually know. You make a lot of stuff. No. You make a lot of stuff. You're a handy little lady. I'm a handy gal. I'm crafty. Yeah. She's crafty. You make crafts and stuff all the time. Make. Yeah, I'm crafty. I mean, you have... I DIY. Yeah, you have paint and shit all over you right now. Show the audience your arm. Oh. Because <laughs> I don't want to get so anybody... staining stuff. F- for anybody who's watching the, uh, the live show, I don't... On, uh, on YouTube, I don't want anybody to watch this and be like, oh my God, Jesse looks like she was beaten or burned by Ross. Or dirty. Ah, or just a dirty, like a burn. dirty burn. Looks like an iron burn. No. Staining. <laughs> Staining uh, about 180 boards. Is that 180? Yeah. Fuck. All different uh, colors and textures. Sorry, what number are you on right now? What number? Yeah. Four. <laughs> Out no, of 180. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. No, dude. I'm like, I'm in the, I'm under 20. I'm under 20. Okay. How do you feel I'm an, about I'm that? I'm making a video of it. You'll see the process. Y- yeah. How do I feel about what? Um. Do you like doing it? I do. I really like doing it. It's why I went to do it on Mother's Day. Is like it is a like. You seemed excited about it's it. A and I was just like, out all right, cool. Thing. I mean, I'm you know painting, staining, cutting stuff, whatever. Like I like doing it. And how do I feel about it? 
I just, I don't, you know, I hope it looks good. Because I'm a finisher, but, but right? But you so enjoy it, right? I enjoy it, yeah. Okay. So I'm doing the finishes. So that would be just the look of everything. He's doing the build and structure and how what people are going to see is what I'm doing. Visually, yeah. So it's kind of like everything will fall on me whether I did it or not. <laughs> Man, mine is uh, for writing. I, like, I like it when I'm done. I don't enjoy the process. Do you enjoy the process? It's different. It's mindless. So writing is not a mindless thing. You have to be, you know, yeah. in it and yeah, yeah, yeah. your mind is working the whole time. Whereas with what I do or carpentry or like staining painting, it's a mindless thing. You can zen out. You can think about other things. You can listen to a podcast. You can. It's a relaxing thing. Right. Okay. I think. Yeah. See, for me, like, because everybody, we were at a function the other night, right? And somebody came up to me and was like, congratulations on your, on the success of everything. And I was mm -hmm. like, what, um, what, what was I, did I do, what did I do? And they were like, well, the book, you know, the new books out on presale and whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I still think about what needs to be done, the audio book, all that other stuff. Like to enjoy it right now is like, no, I'll, the day it comes out, I will. Yeah. But now I'm just like, ugh. Let's just, can we just get this there? Can we just push this over and get this thing out the door? Right. After everybody reads it and loves it, then I'm amped. But that process, I just don't enjoy that process. Right. But I say that about, you know, editing and all of this where you're like, do you like it? Does it make you happy? As you know, I don't think that your job needs to make you happy. Yeah. The actual job of it. I think the things that you get from it make you happy, right? Yeah. You don't, I don't want you to hate your life while you're doing it. But as with writing, you don't say you're not jumping for joy, loving every second of it, no, no. but you like what it affords you. Right. And so yeah. do I. So it's like, that's what I, that's what I mean. When you're like, ah, oh, it just doesn't seem like you're, when you're, you're having fun when you're editing, when I'm like, it's, it's my job. Your mind is working. You're thinking about a million things. You're trying to make things work, you know? And then when you're done, is when you're happy. Is it, you ever when thought, you see the finished product, when yeah. you see people liking it, then you're like, oh, cool. When you get off work and you have, you know, time, more time than you would if you were at an office or, or, or this. You, do, you, do you ever think about, like, is there a thing for you personally? That what? That would make you endlessly happy of, like... From beginning to end? Yes. Like, all day at work and yep. all day when yeah. I come home? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously a traveling... Um, I don't, think you would, I don't think you'd like it. I don't think you would like it. Um, at this stage, I don't think I would. Like where the, I'm the at The travel right now, sucks. Yeah. And then here's what I always wonder when I watch shows like that. With like Fieri and those guys, right? Mm -hmm. And this is in all seriousness. No, or like a morning show. Like I think like Hoda Ooh. and whatever. Like going somewhere, getting your makeup done, getting your topics sent to you, blah, blah, blah. And like being done at like 12, <laughs> 11 or 12. But you're in at four thirty five. Like, yeah, it's brutal. So with a like, we'll we'll take the cooking show for example first, right? Here's what I always think when I see those guys: is how are you not full all the time and then just shitting your brains out the next day eating like like Guy Fieri? Right. How is he able to do that day in and well, day out I would and go to like nine restaurants and just be like, uh? So my model would be more like Bourdain. So you travel to these places, uh -huh. you're there for like a week. And you do dinners. So you do a dinner interview with someone. Okay. Right? So I'm like finding someone interesting there and we go out to dinner, which I would do anyways, which yeah. I love to do anyways. Yeah, and yeah. The filming is long enough, right? For me where it's like wine. Easily, yeah. You know, you Oof. have to be there for a couple hours. You love the a good three hours. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. talking to someone. Like, I think that model and what he did, the way that he did it was just pathological, right? Like he was workaholic about it yeah he just like would not stay home ever <laughs> had a daughter like would just keep going keep going so i like his model but in like a season you know what i mean a okay. season's worth of filming and then you're done for a long time yeah then you go out for the season but it is it's just going to cool places and going to dinner he doesn't eat all day long he eats the meals he was going to eat Bourdain. anyways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just has a film crew and he has someone cool sitting there with him and either he uses it or he doesn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
and then the film crew goes out they film everything get the awesome shots getting get him walking down this cobblestone street and then he goes to dinner and he's out and then if he doesn't feel like filming the next day he doesn't yeah he sends them out to do interviews on the street (laughs) yeah so Bourdain I would love to take your model still giving shouts out to Bourdain forever yeah forever uh, illegitimate father yeah no nobody's i know he's passed the torch yet to him right on on that show what are they doing with it they they just kill it parts unknown oh yeah it's done it was it was him the production company i didn't know if they would try to replace him doing with 0.0 which like if i had a million dollars i would just say hey guys i'm just gonna take you over Mm -hmm. and do my thing (laughs) Yeah. yeah, and now you're going to And it wouldn't be Bourdain. I would just use all of, all his, of his people, people his yeah. whole shit, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like and it do if it, it works. Because I don't like, I also don't like the fakeness of the travel shows now where they're like, hey guys, so check out where I am. Yeah. And it's like, I like that he was just <laughs> like, he would get off the plane and be like, fuck. I mean, on camera, be like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shitty flight. Where can I get a, a drink? Right. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> right? I want to be able to be real about it. If he got sick, he says it on the show. Yeah. Couldn't film that day. I was hungover and I was puking and shitting. My brain's out because I ate street food. <laughs> yeah. Right? Ugh. Just being totally real about what it's like. Yeah, that's... Uh, so would that be, when you ask me what, you know, what what could it possibly be that from beginning, from the time I wake up till the time I go to bed would make me happy work-wise? Yeah. I'd be making money. But again, I don't, I don't know because I'd be away from my family for that amount of time. So again, you're always training one shit for another. The most that we can fucking ask for, Right is to get through our work day and try and have a good life outside of work. Yeah. To balance your life, whatever that is. Yeah, because I, I was I trying, think I was trying to think that, uh, about that as well, where it's just like, hey, man, is there some long job? And I was like, I don't know, man, maybe playing baseball, but I wasn't good enough to be a professional baseball player. And then player. that, too. But I enjoyed it, you know? so much. Be you'd be gone so much. So and much. then, yeah, look, you're a base, like a, a full baseball season, 162 games, where it's just like, oof. 81 of those are on the road. You know. And I think the constant search to be ha- happy every second of the day is fucking retarded. <laughs> You're stupid if that's your main goal in life. I think so. Is to just be happy every second. It's just dumb. Yeah. Who says it? Clean. Clean said something like that. I forget what it was, but it was someone on his show or something that was like, yeah, man, but, you know, it just wasn't fun. You know? It, like I, I would do it, but it's just not fun. Someone said that to him. Yeah. And he was just like, that's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you're talking about work, when you're talking about a project, like, I don't know, but it just wasn't fun. No shit. <laughs> you're an idiot. If you think work is going to be fun all the time. It's yeah. not. I, th- this topic to me is always endlessly fascinating because I think that's what everybody is searching for in life. Is, is stuff like this where you're just like, man, what is it? What is that thing? What is the whole shit of it? And there, there is never going to be a right answer ever. The right answer is to be okay with mediocrity. <laughs> and if anything else more than that happens, be happy for a second. But don't be happy for too long because it will not last. <laughs> right? Life's a roller coaster. It's never good for that long and it's never bad for that long. James is taking... I'm inspirational. You're, yeah, you're 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 taking motivational speaker, uh, right? reservations for motivational speeches. Uh huh. And just lie down sessions. Yep. If where anybody you're talking wants people through yeah. their life, and they're not called motivational speaking. No. It's just called realistic. What would I call it? A realistic <laughs> wake up. Yeah. A violent wake up. A I think, violent wake up call. I think that should be to your to embrace. Here's what it would be called. A violent wake up call to embrace your mediocrity. Yeah. Right. To yeah. embrace your <laughs> mundane. Embrace the mundane. It's all we can ask for. It really is. It really is. Unless you're Britney Spears, you know. What? 
things to you have enough money to do whatever you want you know yeah your dad has all your money <laughs> and you can't do whatever you want she's joined the free britney movement now you know that right uh-huh. i think she's starting to realize like she's starting to come out a little bit what do you think's gonna happen with her you think she'll end up killing herself offing herself um i don't know what's gonna happen with her i don't know actually at all what her real mental state is again if you're bipolar like shit can really go bad if you don't take your medication because she went so, into court i don't know yeah she t- she is now telling the judge her her dad right is committed her to a mental health facility a month ago against her will and also forced her to take drugs i don't know what the real thing with this is well she must not be on the right medication then if she's who knows man i i don't know what the what the, the whole thing, the is problem with, with the bipolar and problem with these you know, bigger disorders is like you, you know, you get delusional and that you think like you don't, you're, you feel good. So you're like, I don't need the medication. Like yeah. I'm normal now because you want so bad to be right. And your brain is like, when it's leveled out, it really thinks like you're good. Yeah. And then you stop taking them and then you go down and it's, it is like this big. So you do need someone there to be like, you have to take them. If you do not, this is what will happen, yeah. right? Um, with anything, right? Schizophrenia, whatever you go, oh, I'm good. I don't need it anymore. Depression, you're like, I feel happy. I don't need the meds anymore. Yeah. And you, you, you do. And you do. And uh, with some people, you need your daddy. God, that's crazy, isn't it? Your dad. I mean. It's a lot of money there. We've got some boyfriend that I don't know what the deal is. So we'll see. He seems we've got the normal. mom against it. Yeah, he seems normal. The boyfriend seems normal. Um, you know, seems like just some dumb guy who's just willing to fucking chill out with. Right. You just don't want it to be someone that's like a, a yes man, another yes man to her of like, oh, yeah, you don't. Yeah. Okay, if you don't want to take him, don't take him, right? Yeah. Which tra- was the problem with her before where people were just like, okay. Yeah. And there was no one to be like, no. Man, I want to see a crazy Britney again. I really do. Oh, yeah. Back on the streets, shaving uh, heads. Right. Eating meats, you know, just sure. doing it. Sure. Her reality show was fascinating when she had one. Gosh, I don't really remember it. Was it with Kevin? K-Fed, yeah, it was okay. with K-Fed. It was great. I don't really remember Two it. Two of them were just kind of boning on camera, just eating weird shit. Oh, yeah. Doing drugs. It was great. Yeah. I think that was the real her. What do you think? Yeah, smoking weed. Yeah, I yeah. did, too. I did, too. You come out of Louisiana, and you're like, ah, all right, cool. Yeah. When, when her and Justin were, uh, were, Timberlake were together, that was a fucking dream team. Remember the powerhouse that they were? Yeah. Wild to think about now. Because he's with uh, Beelster, you yeah. know? Beelster was with Chris, Chris Evans, who, I mean, Captain America. Yeah. That's a... I mean, he did okay. That's a tangled web wee weeb. Yeah, he did, he did wee okay. Wee weeb. Did you go back to all those Mickey Mouse kids? You got Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. Christina Aguilera, mm-hmm. Timberlake, Spears, Timberlake. Spears. I bet you that was a real, Gavin, real hand job fest. That thing, Gavin, who's Milstead? Yep, who is huge? <laughs> Gavin, little the little boy, Gavin, the boy, the Gavin Milstead story. Oh, the Gavin and the Stace, Stacy, uh, Clappenhopper. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Stacy Glavenhopper. Glavin, Glavenhill. Yeah, yeah Stacy Glavenhill. She didn't really make it. Oh, the, the, what would I, what did I even say? If I was like the two of those people that didn't make it out of the Mickey Mouse Club. The Gavin, yeah. Oof. I know. That's well, there were, yeah, there were a couple. I mean, a it lifetime was star making. Worth of depression. Yeah, exactly. Easily for me. Exactly. Um, um, <laughs> Beelster, yeah. Boring ass Beelster. Gosh, snoozy, snooze. Snooze Town, USA. Snoozy, Bealster, all teeth. When you get that skinny, your teeth kind of yeah. start protruding from your mouth. <laughs> skeletal. There's boring, a lot of... Boring skeletal. There's a lot of skeletal people out there, James. Yeah. You have Freaks to be. me out. You have to be. For camera. Yeah, I know. I know that. I know, I did too. There's no angle. I was watching my boy Timothy uh, Oliphant on a show the other day, and I was like, man, it was uh, an interview with him and Walt Goggins. 
Okay. And they're both like super dainty and thin. That's why they always look cool. Where you're just like, man, that's yeah. what that is. That's what that is. It is. There's a reason. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah, we yeah, talk yeah. about like, oh, they told her to lose 20 pounds because they don't want to deal with your camera angle. Yeah. That's all. They don't want to give you a complex or whatever. We just want <laughs> we just want it to look good. Maybe that's we want why you they, to look good. You know, maybe that's why they canceled that Busy Phillips show. Did they cancel it? They did. Yeah. And, and then like the day after she got nominated been her for her voice. Yeah. For an Emmy or something. Could have been her voice. Did you watch it? Watched a couple. It was real hard. Really? It was really hard. Um, it was nominated for, like, I think, like a, an Emmy, like right afterwards or something crazy. Was it? Yeah. And what do you think the reason is because of the camera angle? Uh, it's, it is unforgiving. It is for an her? unforgiving uh, camera angle there for E. So. I thought she looked good, no? She's a, she's a, uh, a taller girl. She's oh, a taller tall. girl. Yeah. Oh, okay. So t- tough angles there for E. Tough angles. I was surprised. Oh, well, I was surprised. N- you to should see never it. do, as if you're a girl and you have a talk show, you should never do two on a couch. Sitting pretty. Oh, boy. That's a hard one, isn't sitting it? Sitting pretty for that long. It's not, it's not ever comfortable. Do you know what I mean? Like, you need, never. You need a desk so you can really just have the conversation. You don't have to worry about covering, sitting. What do I do with my hands, my yeah. legs? You know? So maybe that was it. Maybe she did a she did a straight across couch. Yeah. On a stage. Yeah. That's a tough one. Rough. That's a tough one. I know she was going for a comfortable look. <laughs> but Kinda nobody's like, comfortable. Everyone's uncomfortable. I mean, the only one that was comfortable was Kim Kardashian because she's fucking professional. Yeah. Doesn't matter how or where she sits. She's she's the best. She's a fucking she pro. She knows exactly every angle. She's the best. She's a how pro. How to yeah. She even knows how to put her arms behind so that they look skinny yeah oh yeah yeah so yeah. she's straight on and she can like put them like this she's great it's insane it's it, she's she's one of the best in the biz one of the best in the biz oh do it. we want to talk about her actually fire away like what she's doing that's like good in the world yeah freeing all these prisoners and shit on her own dime i know quietly 17 prisoners have been first, freed yeah because of kim kardashian yeah on her own dime Quietly too, like Quietly. she hasn't not posted about a any big of it. No deal about it. They're posting, and it's kind of coming out now. But she's been doing it since she met with Trump and freed the yeah. first lady. Mm-hmm. And these are all just so they're all insane drug sentences, right? So people that were caught with drugs and then got life sentences, yeah, because of a drug possession. Um, she's getting all these people out. Yeah, nuts, right? Yeah, I'm sure they're filming it in some way, doing something with it. Maybe, but I, I have know. to say it's the only time that I'm not going to shit on her. Shit on her, talk shit about her because that's what you that's the one that's what you want from people that have that, that kind of power, much yeah. fucking money where you just go, you shouldn't be allowed to have that much fucking money without doing at least one thing for either your community, people, you know? other people around you i don't know doing something great with it otherwise well, it's she, like what she the is fuck? so i like yeah. she's checked off my list of like all right so and you know because you can talk as much shit as you want not do anything like Alyssa milano right but let's face it it's kim kardashian's actually doing shit and freeing people she is and again not making a big deal about it and not really outspoken politically and you don't really know where she lies yeah on on either side which is kind of great she's just doing things just doing stuff i don't know i want to the last the last story i want to talk about here is this cock fight i've always wanted to go to a cock fight oh stop i have have you been to one no. did, you, did you go to one in mexico and all your travels throughout the didn't go to a cock fight really because that's a that's a thing that's a big thing it is but it's a very dirty oh underground. yeah seedy yeah i like it didn't do that no, you didn't go Mm-mm. not once. Did you go to a bullfight at all? Yeah. That's worse than a cockfight, right? Um, maybe, but it's more out in the open and they sell tickets Oof. and it's um legal. Yeah. I want the I want the dirty. It wasn't a bull fight, shit. it was running of the bull. So it was like in I just ran from the bull inside this ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, jumped over fences and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. So there's this. They weren't uh, fighting each other. There was a huge bus in Carnes County. Um, this cockfights. 
cockfights mm. in Texas. Um, 150 gamblers were there uh, just ready for the cockfights, and uh, they had no clue. Boom, place got raided. And, you know, that's when shit went down. There was a bunch of drugs and money seized, some guns. Mm -hmm. People were just enjoying a cockfight. If it's been going on that long, it's, it's been going on that long. Death, that's what bullfighting is, Shaves. And I you're going to eat the meat afterwards. To, again, I didn't go to a bullfight. Yeah. I went to running of the bull. Oh, so you didn't, so you didn't actually go to the... They weren't fighting. Gotcha. You didn't go to a bullfight with a matador. Yes. Oh, you did that too. They don't kill them. Yeah, they kill, they kill the bull. That's the whole thing of it. Okay, so it wasn't like the ancient... It, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. What was it? Just a, a dance between a man and a bull? Yeah. You just kind of like... You Weaving rile in and it out. up. You da-da-da-da. And then he goes back into his... Never stab the bull once. No. Come on. That, then you that's didn't. pretty archaic, but yeah. Well, that's what bullfighting is. It's all over the world. Um. So... Again, I don't think it wasn't, it was in Mexico. Yeah. It was in Mexico, so it wasn't bullfighting and the stabbing is more in Spain. No, it's everywhere. No. Yeah. No. Yep. So they just kind of like rile them up. Everyone's <laughs> in there. So everyone from the crowd, like, so what happened was I didn't have enough money for tickets for the stands, but they told you you could go in for free if you're in the ring. So it's a bunch of just like poor people. Really? So you got my, in the ring of this thing? In the ring. There's footage. My friend Dina sent it to me where it's like it's an it's like old, old footage because it's old broadcast camera. Yeah. And the bull is just chasing us around. And you can kind of see us in the corner scaling this wall like two like two girls like it was so high but for some reason when a bull's chasing you obviously you're like super human were the horns sharp or were they dull i mean i think they were doled out a little bit they okay. weren't like super sharp like it couldn't have torn torn through like a rectum or anything like that no but it could definitely have like broken your ribs and riled you around a little bit okay yeah and then we also did the thing the teeter-totter thing Oh, you're like on really? there and the bull yeah, runs yeah, yeah, around yeah. and you have to like push up. The two of you guys, yeah, yeah, like on jackass. It was four. Oh, so okay. it was a four yeah, one yeah, yeah. and yeah. the guy ha and it has to like whatever. Did you, get, did you get knocked off of that thing? No. Okay. We did good. All right. We got away from it. I, look, but I so like it was more I, I've like never been to a bull fight or a cock fight. Yeah. Really want to go to an underground cock fight though, you know? Have fun. <laughs> I just, I want to see it. Uh, it you know? just looks I wanna see so Because you're going to eat the, you're gonna eat the, the chickens yeah. afterwards. So what's the, what's the fucking difference, you know? Yeah, they're roosters, right? I, th I think. They're not chickens. So they're full on roosters, which you don't usually eat, by the way. You're eating the you hen. You don't eat a rooster. Mm -mm, you're, you're eating the hen. There are some recipes that are like call for like a rooster, but they're a very tough. They're the male. Okay. And um, they have to stay alive for a lot longer than the hen because they're fertilizing all these eggs. So there's like a couple cocks, cocks. for the, the hen yeah. house. Um, so you're not, you're not actually eating them. But uh, two roosters just go. And they are violent motherfuckers. That's what I heard. And that's they what I want to. crazy, yeah, dude. That's what I want to see it. So I, really want to see it, James. I don't feel for the roosters. It's just a like, it's almost like hearing a crazy cat fight. It's just like, oh, ah. yeah. it's jarring. I, want, I, I, I need, it's a, I need a, a cock fight on my resume, James. I you really do. Go. I, well, I want to. I, again, I would do it in Mexico. I don't think they get raided down there. Don't do it in Texas or anywhere in the States. Uh, Shit that, will that, go lower, down. that lower part of Texas, though, has become Mexico. So oh, sure. Do it in Laredo. Kind of, yeah. You're right there on the on the border of the whole city. You can kind of just you know, maybe just slide across. Creeping up. Yeah, there's no wall. Slowly taking over. <laughs> I think the land was theirs anyways to begin with. So. Sure. Not really a big surprise on this one. Uh, we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day. Uh, shall we, James? Oh, we shall. Uh, this one's going out to Doris Day. All right. She passed away today at 97. No way. Yes. Yes. Were you a Doris Day fan? What was she from? Oh, boy. <laughs> I know I've heard the name oh, from my mom. Oh, boy. Uh, this is why I want to have this conversation All right now. Okay. We 
all the time think about like what we do for a living and like we're important. We've made movies and you're like, oh man, this is going to last forever and everybody's going to remember this. No, no one is. Doris Day was as big as you got. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people consider her an icon, right? But then today, like if you don't, if you can't name anything, right? Um, imagine kids right now. They have no fucking idea who Doris Day was. Mm-mm. She was as big as you possibly could get. Mm-hmm. She was the Julia Roberts of okay, probably the 40s, 50s, and 60s, like that era. I would say mostly the 50s, probably. Okay. Um, and now nobody knows what anything. It's just like, hey, you know, pillow talk. Yeah. What? She was in pillow talk. I don't know pillow talk. It, like your mom watches all of these movies. Yeah, I'm sure my mom knows her. I mean, of <laughs> course my mom knows her. But yeah. Um, yeah, I, outlaw Josie Wales, like all that stuff. Okay, like, that I yeah. know. That yeah. I know. Yeah. Doris Day, you said? Doris Day. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Doris? So when I, we talk about people like this, like if you look back and you're like, man, no one will remember. I, I, I actually but think. I don't think that right now. Like what, what, what you, you were saying out of like, you, we think we're doing this stuff and we think we're, you know, you don't think that li- no, in my mind, eight people are listening tops. <laughs> really? It's not. It's one point. I know, but like, like yeah. you know, it's amazing to me that even anybody fucking listens to me. Tops. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm sorry. It was a uh, calamity Jane, by the way. Um, that I not, know. Uh, well, just who else, but, uh, yeah, she was in uh, The Man Who Knew Too Much. I mean, Hitchcock. She's been in a million fucking things. And it's like, again, I thought, because you may, I, this, is, this is a Anything God. Anything on Netflix? This is the God's Honest Truth, yes. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a God's Honest Truth, what, what I thought. When I started off making movies, right? And that's, you know, you move to Los Angeles and do the whole thing and everything. You think you're going to make these important films and people are going to remember you forever for what you've done, Right? That's, I, that's what that's I th- what you thought. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. That's what most of my friends thought. That's what you continuously think. And you're yeah, like, yeah. man, I'm going to be important forever and yeah, all this yeah, other yeah. stuff. As you get older, you realize, no, you're, you're not. Mm-hmm. And I look back on it and I'm like, man, I think the best shot at maybe being remembered for something out of all of this stuff is probably books. Yeah. Because films, people, you know, they'll get remade. There's a million. They don't like this Doris Day thing. They don't, I don't know. They don't show any of her movies on Netflix. No. Therefore, in today's world, you don't know who that is. She was the fucking Julia Roberts of, of back in the 50s. Time. Yeah, of her time. I think that's the problem with getting too old, though. So she should have died. Oh, right? no, James. How old is she? 97. Yeah. <laughs> you want her to if die younger went, so she could be appreciated? I'm just saying. You talk about this, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when you, you know, I don't know, Dick Van Dyke still kind of doing stuff. He, uh, he is, but like, I, will every, will anybody remember the greatness of Dick Van Dyke? I mean, I will, but I've just seen, you know, that's what sucks Mary to me. Poppins. So what do you have to do? You have to be in an iconic movie that goes past the generation. So Doris Day, if you name me one that's like, my kids saw it. Yeah. You know, my kids are going to see it. I saw it and my mom saw it, right? So you have to have something that crosses generations in order to be remembered. And again, that could be a book. Yeah. Could be a movie that's made out of a book that's yeah, epic. Yeah, yeah. That they remake, that the whatever. Yeah, I so, mean. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what the answer is. And then the other thing is you die younger. You die younger. <laughs> Okay, because when you get into the 90s and they show the picture on the fucking Today Show, A Life Well Lived, a lot of times it's like, oh, they did that. That's cool. More and more as time goes by, I just, I realize how fucking dumb I was younger of like, man, this is going to change the world. People will remember forever and they won't. Mm -mm. They (laughs) really. No. Again, books, maybe, I think. Because well, the things that I'm writing, live on, sure. well, and here's why I was thinking about this. So they get reinsurgence. They get made into stuff later. Well, they also get found like again. these, the books that I'm writing now are so aggressive comedically that I feel society as it just keeps getting dulled down over the years with all of this 
you know, they're ripping all these people off of their platforms of Facebook and YouTube and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. Like, I don't know that you're going to be able to write this type of shit in like 10 years. Therefore, I think everyone's going to go back to it and be like, dude, can you believe they, this guy fucking did this years ago? Yeah. And I think that's the only shot. But like how naive I was to think doing movies, you know, starting at 22 or 30 or whatever it was. And just been like, oh, man, this is going to be so important. I'm going to be so important forever. And yeah. you realize, no, Doris Day was as big as you could get. And then no, 40 years later, 50 years later, it's just like, oh, what was she in? Was she on, is she on Netflix? It's Doris, right? <laughs> My mom, if she's listening, is like cringing, cringing, cringing. because it's like her fave. Yeah, and I know I've only heard the name from her. You know, Doris Day. She's like a Doris Day. Yeah, she's a Doris Day. She's a modern day Doris Day. I don't know. I don't she, know, she, I don't you know, know your mom compares you to Doris Day, right? Looks wise. Compares me. Yeah, looks wise. Is that good? Or yeah, she's, she was odd. Classic Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. A classic. Just a, a natural beauty. Yeah. Just a natural beauty. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Doris Man. Doris Day I'll remember that name Sure How wrong I was About all of it I, You know what I forgot About the other day Was Robin Williams And that made me sad too Oh uh, well I mean Yeah but if you He's the greatest Yeah I was the greatest The greatest In so many you ways watch all, We watch all of these Documentaries all the time People that are, you know, oh man, so and so is the best or the best, and it's just like, do you? Robin Williams was the best. Was the best. And now, like, dude, I forgot. So, so somebody brought him up. I was like, oh shit, Robin Williams. Can't believe he died. How, I, I don't know how many years ago it was. Now at this point, uh, I don't even remember his last movie. I remember his TV show that was shitty with Sarah Michelle Gellar, but like, I still forget the greatness of Robin Williams because it's not yeah. jammed into my face on Netflix every day. Yeah. Whereas, like. Fucking John Mulaney. Gosh. Ah. Yeah. I, that guy's in my face every day on Netflix. Every day. Not Robin Williams. And I realize I'm not that important. I'm not. Right. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're actually learning that over time. Really? Should we go into overtime? Overtime. Go ahead. Overtime. Going into overtime. 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 Going into overtime. 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 Going into overtime. <laughs> but I don't think you should go into anything thinking that you're going to be the greatest and remembered for it. Well, that's Just why. Just do good shit. That's and like, why don't you, worry about what the fuck. But that's why I, I do things, me personally, right? To, to be the greatest and be remembered? Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, that's the... I don't want to do just something average and mediocre just, just to do it. Um, I try to do th- like, you, like take Matt's book, for example. The, the reason why this was so hard and like, like I know we, we kind of keep talking about it here and on social media was it is nothing like anyone has ever read before in the military world. And it truly has a chance to be like a groundbreaking piece of work that's could shift an entire culture where you're just like, oh, fuck. All right. This is so totally different than everything I've read. And I'm trying to, I was trying to go back in my mind and try to think about other things, right? In life that have done that for me. I remember reading, uh, I hope they serve beer and hell for the mm-hmm. first time. And I was like, oh my God, no one's ever written like this. Right. No one's ever talked like this. Mm-hmm. I felt that way about Swingers, the movie Swingers, where I was just like, holy shit. I didn't feel like I had ever seen a movie where somebody talked like me or thought like me or, and then I saw swingers and I was like, Oh my but God. I think that those connected with you because they were just like swingers. He was just making the movie that he wanted to make with his friends, talking the way that he talked and telling his experience. I don't think that Favreau was like, I'm going to change the world and people are going to remember me forever. I, I think having even that in your mind will take away the authenticity of what you're doing. So if you just do it to be the coolest, to do what you say, it's talk how you talk, right? you know, do a diff, do the military. You couldn't have written that book any other way, right? It's like you wanted yes, you to could, write I, it. I, I could have, but it would have been but boring. You wanted to write it. In the way of like how you talk, how Matt talks, how you guys talk to each other. Yeah. How you guys talk about the military in different ways than all these other books have like made it like yeah. you're a hero or you're a fucking broken 
man, PTSD yeah, 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 yeah. man yeah. that needs fucking help. You were doing it in a different way. It's about a guy that loves to kill, you know? Uh. <laughs> and has feelings about it and yeah, is and a hilarious. real person and yeah. fluctuates between different things and isn't completely broken and isn't a fucking hero and isn't just a person that did some, you know, did all these crazy things. See, with Favreau, though, on the swingers tip, like, I know he got in a fight with a director and they don't talk. Like, they. It's Doug Lyman. Mm hmm. For whatever reason, everybody who's worked with Doug Lyman doesn't talk to him afterwards. Uh, Matt so Damon, because he did, Fabro, he did the yeah. Born Identity, mm-hmm. right? Because um, well, Doug Lyman directed Swingers. Um, yes, I'm just saying. Um, like, in the, that the instance, weirdest part about it, it to me is John Favreau is one of the biggest directors there is right now. Uh, but I, he, I heard, got in a fight because he wanted it to be great, and he had his own. He wanted it to be great because he wanted. Well, he wanted it to be the way he wanted. He wanted it to be the vision that he wanted it to be. Yeah. He never in any interview or anything was like, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. This I'm going to be remembered forever, ever. I don't know. I he wonder. He wanted to make the movie that he wanted to make, and he wanted it to look on screen how it was in his head, and he thought it was cool. He thought the voice of Vince Vaughn and his voice, and he thought all of these would like connect with somebody, and they did. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know what I would like to do, by the way, speaking of Favreau, dream shows, mine would be Dinner for Five. That would, Remember that on IFC or Sundance Network? Oh, yeah. Fuck. That was one of my favorite shows. That would, would just be kind five of a cool... interesting, cool actors sitting around ch- rapping about life. And, they, and like they were all drinking. You could smoke inside back then. So like they would oh. let loose after a few drinks. And you were like, oh, here we go. It's all over time. Here we go. Wow. Now that I would, I would that, like to redo yeah. if I could hit him up and be like, hey, I'll do, let me do this with you. Right. Because I know a bunch of these weird, cool people now who have just kind of come up now and you're like, oh, that person, that person, that person, that person. It'd be, it'd be cool to hear their weird stories where you're just like, what? Yeah. And you'd be good with, I think, connecting the right people to have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. finding certain people that will work well together as far as like that dinner. You can't mm-hmm. just find anyone you think is interesting it has to be people that can connect get, yeah, and get along yeah either challenge each other or want to debate you know are, are smart in their own ways whatever and, and what did he do did he have a topic sometimes or they just talked about whatever yeah they kind of just talked about whatever for like two hours right the meals would be two hours and they would cut it down to like a you know 20 22 minute pot you know show and mm-hmm. uh it kind of depends on what happens and it was it was kind of a collection of cool stories about oh this and this or did you work with so-and-so i worked with so-and-so Mm-mm. here's what happened and it was super fucking and then they would go off on their story yeah the only way you could do that now i think is i think probably pe- youtube and your own show yeah yeah, yeah. But, but people i think people would let their guard down enough and be like all right cool remember yeah. remember we did a show with robert davi yes at that italian deli that was one of our faves. Yeah, but that was the thing. They kept bringing food over, right? Like, yeah. that's the dream. They kept bringing food over, drinks. They kept bringing bottles. And, like, you know, we were recording the whole thing. We didn't have it on video. But, like, that would have been I know. an awesome show. Finding some weird little place like that that will let you set up and do a dinner interview. People. And that was his suggestion. Hey, come to this Italian deli and wherever we were. People loosen up. Like, it's, it's a weird thing that, and that's the Bourdain model, right? It's a weird thing that when you're eating food and you kind of are using the food as the main. And you're drinking. Because you were, that, that guy, they opened up wine inside that store, oh, remember? Yeah. We had you drink, copious you're amounts food, of wine. You're in like a setting that's very intimate. You start talking about that you're not going to be guarded. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't be. You can't uh, sit there and like drink wine and eat and like not say anything, right? Or like all the it all goes out the window. Yeah, that would be a fun one to bring back. But yeah, I, I've I, as look as time go, as has gone on, you're like, oh man, I will not be that important. Like none of this. Way <laughs> yeah, so let it go. <laughs> Just do the shows that you want to do. Write the books that you want to write. I know. Because and, none um, of us are really that fucking important. And no matter how big authenticity, you get, yeah. it's, it's just going to be like, uh, all right, cool. And the movies they keep re-showing over and over again, are like superhero movies and shit like that, where you're just like, man. Like they, they still keep showing Triple X with Vin Diesel. You know, and you're like, oh, oh yeah. man. Vin Diesel, like if he died right now, people would give a fuck more than Doris Day. 
again, but he's dying younger. Uh, and he's dying right after he? he did something. He's though. look. She died at ninety seven. Vin When's Diesel is eighty years old right something. now. So do you know what I'm saying? No, I know. No, I know. It's been a while. Right, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's been a while. I don't know what made me go off on that tangent, but uh, that you thought you were going to be the greatest and you were going to re- be remembered forever, and you're not. I. It's okay. You think it's with okay. all of this, you will. And then again, somebody pops up like Doris Day, and you're like, man, yeah. Your mom used to say, I'll, I'll turn the, the thing around. Your mom used to send pictures and be like, dude, you're like Doris Day. I am. And now you don't even know who she is. And I'm going to hit your mom up and be like, hey, <laughs> listen to this episode. You're not going to believe this. Your daughter doesn't know who Doris Day is, for Christ's sakes. Doris, right? <laughs> D. Overtime. Going into, into overtime. overtime. Overtime is over now, Javes. No, it's, you can't. Yep. You it's can't over. say overtime is over. No, it's we over just now. end yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's uh it's definitely we're over. We're still in overtime yeah, we're, over until now. we end the show. It's over now. We're gonna end it now. We're gonna we're gonna call it a day here. Mm-hmm. We got weird today. We're just talking about whatever. Pretty much. Yeah. For Jesse Wiseman, aka the Javes. I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Subscribe on YouTube, everybody. Good night. Oh, good night. There it is. <laughs>